Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about my mistakes. Things I've done and screwed up, I think maybe you'll learn something from it, or heck, it's just a good story. We're talking taxes, we're talking just the time money conundrum. It's going to be a good episode, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Yeah, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you found the podcast. If it's not your first time here, um, I'm glad you're still listening. Um, And today, we've talked about mistakes kind of in the past, but today, I want to go over some things I've screwed up on, lessons, I guess, that I think every business owner kind of goes through. I know I sure have, and I think you, if you haven't, may already figure them out. And I got to say, like, uh, we talk positive all the time, and I do try to stay very positive with a lot of stuff, but sometimes, sometimes you just get a lot out of, like, the crap, you know? Like, you get a lot out of someone just really messing up, and in as long as I've been doing this, I've really just messed up sometimes, and... It's, it's, a, it's a learning experience. I always say this. If you have a mistake, right? You do something, you screw something up, you go, whoa, that didn't work. And you learn a lesson from it. It wasn't a mistake. It was a lesson, right? I mean, there's a lot of people who pay a lot of money for lessons. And this is just happens to be one that you might be learning yourself. But if you do something and you don't learn from it, you do it again, then it's a mistake, Right? So there's a lot of benefits to kind of learning from the crap, and that's really what we're going into. And I got to say, my biggest thing that I know has caused me kind of some PTSD was taxes, right? When you get into business, you're like, okay, I know I'll have to pay taxes, you know, whatever. You go all year at the beginning without paying taxes and then pay it at the end of the year. That's before you do like your estimated and things like that. And I got to say, I had... A family friend do my taxes, uh, which was like my dad's friend who did the family's taxes forever. And I just thought, ah, whatever. It was super cheap, whatever. But they waited right until the end. And uh, it never was a big problem until one year I go in there. I got like three days. I think it's Friday. Taxes due Monday. Call me in to sign everything. Get it all in, you know, down to the crunch point. Wow, you guys did really well last year. I said, yeah. This was like the first year that I really kind of took business seriously. So like growth was just crazy. I was like, yeah, thank you. Not thinking, hey, dummy, your accountant is telling you how good you did. Well, I had a fat tax bill, fat tax bill. Uh, I wish I had that tax bill now. Uh, But at the time, it was crazy. And I was in Wisconsin. And I was, uh, obviously, tax time's April. So coming out of it, you don't have that money coming out. There's nothing has been really going on. And I get slapped with like a fourteen dollars or $15,000 tax bill that I had to come up with in four days. And I just didn't have it. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Now, I know you can do um, payment plans and things like that. But at the time, I had payroll coming out. I had all this other stuff. And it was it was like the biggest bomb dropped on me. Um, and it was all because I didn't plan. It was just my simple stupidity in taxes that I just didn't know. And which, you know, I talk about a ton now, but I didn't have the right person. I didn't have somebody that was looking at things every month, every quarter, going over things with me, talking to me before the end of the year, working on deductions and things like that. I didn't have the right company. And, uh, I learned a valuable, valuable lesson about saving for that. And I'll I'll tell you, if you're not saving separate for taxes, say you're a smaller company, if you're a bigger company, you got, you know, you're estimated and everything's in, I get it, you understand it already. But if you're new in this business, which I think a lot of people are, and they don't quite see it, but you need to save money. You'd have to put X amount of every deposit into a separate account. And I'll tell you, if you save a percentage of every deposit, when tax time comes, you can have the money to pay those taxes and then anything that's left is marketing. Use it for marketing, start over again. 
if you tether your, your percentage off of your deposits, you will never lose that way, right? Obviously, deductions will be better. Deductions could be worse. You're over saving. But if you're not doing your estimated and you're going to pay all at once, put it into an account separate. I'm telling you. There's a lot of people who do this now, kind of this thing, right? And the whole year, they're good, right? Some of you have like the biggest like pressures on your shoulders is taxes. You're like, man, taxes I know is a four letter word in my book, right? Like, I, It's just awful. I don't look forward to it. I'm scared of it. I just put it off to the last second. Well, it's just because you didn't plan, right? You, you didn't have everything, right? If taxes were automatically taken out, just like they are for people who get paid, it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, you hand my stuff and I gotta turn it in. Like it's not a big deal because it's already planned for. But for us in small business, it hurts so much more because we didn't plan for it. So plan for it, take a percentage, put it in a savings. I'm telling you right now, if you can do 25% of everything, put it into your savings. Depending on deductions, how you do, what your classes, how your filings are, you'll get some of your money will be left over, but you'll be covered. I'm telling you, that is a big one. That for me just hit really hard. That's my PTSD, PS, PTSD moment <laughs> in, uh, in business. It, it was really, really tough for me. And I'll tell you, it all stemmed from another issue, which was the time versus money conundrum and i'll explain what i'm talking about when you get into business you go man i'm gonna get into business have all this free time i can do it from anywhere ah oh, it's gonna be so great yes and as soon as your mind switches to going whoa this could be a thing like i could create a business i could i could make a great income i could maybe hire some people i could do all this stuff and all of a sudden you're focused on the money and now you're like well i have all this time i could put into it to make more money and now all of a sudden you're making more money and you give up the free time. This isn't everyone. I just did a poll um, a little bit ago. It's time versus money. What would you rather have? And a lot of people say time. A lot of people say time. The money thing starts to kind of take you over and that's what you focus on, which I don't think is a problem if you're okay with that. But I also think that that is maybe a temporary thing. If you put in the hustle and you're just so focused on that income, growing the business, more money in means more money I can spend on marketing, which means I get more money in. I can build a business bigger, faster, stronger. If I can do that, I'm able to then have a business that could run with me less of the time and I could have more free time with the income if I wait a few years. But this is the conundrum. Like, what do you do? Do you... Do you have the free time or do you have the money? And for me, my mistake was not seeing the difference, not understanding that it was a conundrum that every single business owner goes through. No one talked about it. So in the very beginning, I was time. I was like, oh man, this is great. I'm making like what I did at my job. I work like a day a week. The rest of the time I'm playing video games with a buddy or going, you know, hanging out or whatever. I was younger. I just didn't quite get the conundrum. And that tax year I just talked about, I decided to just like, what if I did this? What if I like did this whole like, I work, I do all of this stuff on this one or two days a week. What if I did that every day a week? If I did that every day of the week, I could just blow this thing up. And as soon as I took that seriously, and I traded in my time for money. I still didn't work weekends. I didn't work nights, you know, for the most part, that kind of thing. So I still did have time, but I just put in that hustle to get the money. As soon as I did that, my company exploded. And with that kind of growth comes the lack of time. Because now you're like, well, I could not do something today, but then I don't make any money or I don't grow my business. So then if I'm in the season of growth, I'm going to hustle that part right now because later I'll have not only free time, but the income. There's a uh, like Chinese proverb and it's this guy who just sits there and fishes and all day he sells a couple mangoes on the beach and 
and the rich businessman walks up to him and goes, hey, why don't you like, why don't you, you know, get more mangoes, sell more? He goes, because I, I fish, you know? He goes, yeah, but if you didn't fish and you went out and just got a ton of mangoes, had multiple locations, you could have all these people selling mangoes and you would make a bunch of money. He goes, yeah, but I fish. He goes, I know, I know, I know, but listen, if you had all that stuff, you put up that infrastructure work super hard, you could have all these companies and then, you know, 10, 20 years from now, you have this giant fruit, like conglomerate. You got all the money in the world. You can go and do anything you want. And he says, like fish? He goes, yeah, like fish. He goes, well, that's what I do now. Right? So having that thought of either money or time is the conundrum. And you have to have a good balance. But one does equal the other in time and for a sustained period. So it's an interesting conundrum. I didn't know that everybody went through this. I didn't know it was like a thought or a thing. When I flipped the switch in my head, my company exploded. But then I gave up a lot of my just like doing nothing time. And it's the point of where are you in your business? Are you like in the, I want the time or I want the security, I want the strong company, I want it to be self-sustained? Where are you? I do have to say before, you know, getting up on my, my high horse here, think about COVID. Like when that all happened, if you went through that in business, there were a lot of companies who were not as focused on being strong. They were more focused on the time. When COVID hit, they didn't have the strength or the resources to survive that and ended up losing everything. So super weird, something to think about. There's no real wrong reason or no wrong answer either. It's what your answer is. It's really what your answer is. Right. Another big mistake that I made that I imagine you may be making also is understanding why people buy and why people repeat. Like, here's the thing. And this is the big, if you've seen any of my uh, posts lately, by the way, I'm, I'm going to go off here and I'm, I'm going to shameless plug myself real quick. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That's what I do and that's how I get paid. So if any of this is of value to you, let me be a rep. I genuinely want to be a rep and put your orders in. That's cost you nothing extra and that's how I make my cheddar. So all you do is just when you're logged in at windowcleaner.com, just click save this cart and then text me at 862-312-2026. Just shoot me a message. Be like, yo, everything's in my cart. Let's do this. If you do that, I put your order in. I get credit. It's a virtual high five. Really genuinely show shows me that you appreciate it. That it's amazing to me. But on top, I get credit. That's how I live, right? Also, the American Window Cleaner magazine. Go get a subscription to that. It's awcmag.com. Get it. It's a paper magazine. Magazine comes every single month with stickers. It's awesome. It's awesome. I also have TikTok and YouTube. If you haven't found my YouTube, uh, it is new to me. I'm trying to blow that side up. It's just Jersey underscore nation. If you have a second, uh, go. I post these on WCRs, but my personal.